Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing another scenario editor tutorial. This time it is actually another viewer requested video, which is about cutscenes. So, how do you do the cutscene? I made a very basic example here, a little bit of a change view, some instructions been shown on the screen, nothing too fancy, but just to give you an idea how you can make your own ones. So I've got four triggers here. I'll just go through them in the order which, well, makes the most sense here. Starting with the start cutscene, in this case, we could have all sorts of conditions here. Maybe as soon as you get a certain number of units, maybe if you reach castle time, then this will happen or something. In this case, it's just a simple timer to get things going. So as soon as eight uh, ticks have passed, we're activating the trigger breached walls. So this here is not really necessary, but in order to keep it simple, I used uh, the activate trigger here. Because if you take a look at the trigger which is happening now, it would make things a little bit harder to keep oversight over. Because that's what you do here. We do damage a few objects like these walls get uh, get damaged a bit. And we create defending units, we create attacking units and then they fight each other. That's basically what we do here. It's a lot of single triggers. But then we change ownership from all buildings here and units from player 1 to player 3. So in this way, the player cannot interact with the cutscene, which is what a cutscene should be there for. But also, at the same time, I create an invisible object for player 1 here in the corner. This is here to make sure that player 1 doesn't lose the game at, at the moment where all its units and objects go under the control of player 2, uh, player 3. Um, also, we change the V to this area because here's where the action happens. Display some instructions, walls some breached, uh, uh, crusaders, bad stuff happening and we activate the end cutscene trigger. This one waits for the fight to play out, so as soon as player 3 owns 3 or less Eastern Swordsmen, which are the units which will spawn here through the previous trigger, then the ownership of all female and all male villagers from player 3 go back to player 1, so we won't get control over the uh, whole fortress again, but only over the villagers. A view gets changed over here, and we also remove those rocks, so the path here is free. And we just place some instructions, fortress lost, we can escape the hidden path through the mountains. And we also remove that invisible object, that is very important to do, because otherwise it can happen that even if the player loses all other units, they still don't lose because there's still the invisible object around, you can want to uh, deal with it that, that way. And then in the end, if player 1 got 4 objects over here, so if all villagers escape the fortress, the player wins. Yeah, again, this is just a simple example, but uh, it should get the idea across. There we go. Walls have been breached. Units spawn. Other units are attacking. You see there are a bunch of Eastern Swordsmen, but as soon as yeah, enough of them died, this here disappeared. We can now attack with the units again. And we can run away. So these objects all stayed under player 3's control, so our ally. And we just making our way out of here and that's a little cutscene here as always uh thanks for watching and uh, definitely keep these suggestions coming so if you got any question anything you would like to see demonstrated here i would gladly provide you with some help there if you got any further questions regarding this issue i mean this has been a quite a simple example of course you can do way more complex things but uh, you gotta keep things simple in order to explain them properly so yeah that's that thanks for around See you next time. Have a good one. This has been Alkalim. Goodbye.